Hi, I'm New World Now podcast host Kim Corbin. I recently had the opportunity to sit down and talk with Dr. Pankaj Vij about his new book, Turbo Metabolism. I hope that you'll enjoy the interview. Tell us about the title of your book, Turbo Metabolism. I thought long and hard and I decided that the title of my book was going to be Turbo Metabolism because in all my work with people with metabolic diseases, which is obesity, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, that is heart disease, the underlying problem seems to be something wrong with the metabolism, or at least that's what people perceive. So I wanted the title to be something that gets your attention, and Turbo is something that empowers, that embodies power, supercharging something and really getting it going. So Turbo Metabolism is about really what you can do, the things that are within your control, to take charge of your metabolism and put it in turbo. Oh, I love it. I love it. Your book offers a holistic approach to healing, which I really appreciated because a lot of times in Western medicine, that isn't part of it. Um, so can you talk a little bit about the connection between mind, body, soul, and spirit? It is so intimately connected. I mean, somebody would, can say, where is the mind-body connection? And I'll say, it's your neck. Right? <laughs> That's a mind-body connection in a very simplistic way. But in my work with thousands of, of people with metabolic syndrome, what I found is that until you can connect at the level of the mind and the spirit, you really can't get the body to change. Yeah. You know, this is about making ch ch making changes, making choices, and getting away from our default settings of doing things the way that we've done them for years and years and years. And it's just not possible to have a body transformation until you have a mind transformation because it involves an entirely different way of thinking about yourself and the universe around. It involves changing your habits. It involves challenging beliefs that you've had for a long time. So it's really, you can't transform the person without first, you know, looking at what's going on in their mind. And that's why a lot of times people will lose a lot of weight and then it comes back because they right. haven't dealt with the underlying exactly. issue. Exactly. The, yeah. root, the root cause is not the, the obesity, the weight, the blood pressure, the high blood sugar, whatever you, the things that we measure are just symptoms. That's like saying, you know, I have a fever, right? I can take a Tylenol and that'll get rid of the fever. But it didn't really address the underlying cause. Do I have a pneumonia? Do I have the flu? Do I have a urinary infection? And I need to identify that cause and take care of that cause. And then the symptom will, it's simple, it'll disappear yeah, yeah. when we address the cause. Right. And what would um, your best advice be as far as meal timing and frequency? So that's a really interesting one that actually came up for me as I was researching this book because conventionally, you know, all the experts, the so-called experts have said you should have three meals a day, you should have, you know, three snacks a day, cut down your calories, have more frequent small meals. And what it turns out that, again, from an evolutionary perspective, this makes sense too, that we're actually not designed to be eating all the time. We're designed to have a short eating window. We're designed to have a window of time when we're in the non-fed state too. Again, going back to the idea of cycling from feast and famine, and feast and famine. So when we shorten the eating window, if we eat for eight or nine or 10 hours a day, and then we're allowing the body in the 16 hours or something like that, close to 16 hours to really process and digest that food, we let the insulin levels drop. When the insulin levels are low, that's when the body goes into fat burn. If I'm constantly snacking and eating and snacking and eating from the moment that I open my eyes from 6 in the morning until you know, 10, 30, 11, I'm going to bed and I'm having popcorn or cookies or ice cream while I'm watching television, I'm really maintaining a high level of insulin all the time. I'm not letting that insulin level go down. If the insulin level stays up, we don't go into fat burn. So we, we don't metabolize, we don't burn fat. When insulin is high all the time, we call that insulin resistance. It's like if I'm yelling at my kids all the time, what do they do? They, they tune me out, they can't even hear me. So essentially, you're tuning out something that's, that's, a, that's a noise, a constant noise all the time. So and when we maintain high insulin levels all the time, essentially the body figures out a way to tune that out. And that's insulin resistance again in a simplified way. The yeah. that your book uh, has helped me to create is realizing that before I have my coffee in the morning, yeah. it's a good idea to drink a liter of water. So will you talk about the benefits of doing that and then also how much water should we be drinking in a day? 
Right. Water is very, very important. And I talk about this in the book that the majority of us, something like 70% of us are chronically dehydrated and we don't even know it. And so, so dehydration is not when you feel thirsty. That's not when you need to be drinking. You, you know, it's like everything else. We need to be proactive. So a rule of thumb that I talk about with most people is half your body weight in ounces. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you should be having about 100 ounces of water, which is almost a gallon of water. Uh, when we, when you and I wake up in the morning, we are actually dehydrated because, guess what? We haven't had anything to eat or drink for the eight hours that we've been in bed. That's why we have breakfast. It's called break fast. We break the fast when we have breakfast. But we also haven't had any water. And as I said earlier, our needs for water are a lot more urgent than our needs for food. So we really should be f f breaking the fast of water a lot more quickly than we worried about eating something and putting some food in our mouths. Instead, what do we do? We turn on the coffee machine and we start, you know, drinking coffee. What is coffee? It's actually a diuretic. I love my coffee too. I love the taste. It, you know, it feels good to have a nice warm cup of coffee in the morning. But if you hydrate first, then you're getting a little bit ahead of the game. Yeah. And then if, even if the coffee makes you go to the bathroom a little more, you had that liter of water and so you've just got the hydration going. Right, right. And then another uh, habit that I have shifted after reading your book is that I had gotten away from weight resistance training and I was just doing cardio and just focusing on burning calories. And I realized from your book that actually I was missing a huge piece there and, uh, and weight resistance training is really important. So you talk about why that's such an important thing for us to be doing? That is huge. So we talked about the title of the book, Turbo Metabolism. And metabolism is about energy delivery. If you look at your metabolism or your uh, total daily energy expenditure in a day, and we have a, we have a little pie chart for that. Uh, so 70% of your total daily energy expenditure is, is from the activities that your body is doing just to stay alive. Your heart beating, your brain, your liver, your digestive system, your kidneys. And can you change that? You can't really modify that. Um, the, the, really the only thing in the, in the metabolism that's within our control is the resting metabolic rate of our skeletal muscles. So we need to activate those skeletal muscles. We need to grow them if we can. It's really hard to grow more muscle. I've been struggling with that for a long time myself. Uh, but if we can just even maintain the muscles that we have, especially as we get older, that is absolutely paramount in maintaining turbo metabolism. Mm -hmm because those muscles are your best friends, muscles burn fat, people that do more resistance exercise are more energetic, they're also leaner, right? Contrary to the idea that, oh my God, I'm going to bulk up, I'll gain weight. No, you're going to look better, your, your pants are going to fit better, you're going to be burning fat, that's what you want. So muscle is your friend, the way to activate muscle is to do more resistance exercise. And I think a lot of people make this mistake, they have an hour to spend at the gym or for physical activity and they spend all of it cardio. on cardio yeah. instead of allocating at least a little bit, I would say at least half to resistance exercise. Well, it's great. And it's like it breathes new life into my workout routine because I was right? kind of bored, you know, yeah. I was just doing the same thing. So now I'm, it's, I, so I appreciate that a lot. What do you most hope readers will take away from your book, Turbo Metabolism? Hmm. What do I most hope they'll take from the book? would be the message that transformation is possible and you have the power to take your health back. It's not up to somebody else. You have the power, no matter how old you are, no matter how long you've been sick, no matter how sick you think you are, you have the power to take your health back because you can make different choices no matter who you are, no matter what stage you're in.